June Solstice Observations, Flat Earth and Globe Earth, Part 3, Path of the Sun. This video is largely copied from the December Solstice video of the same name, which I recorded about a year and a half ago. Uh, I have added a, a couple new features, especially dealing with the hyperbolic nature of the Globe Earth path. Um, so, uh, so please stick around because there's, there's some new stuff in here. So the first question is, do you have to do this exactly on the June solstice? And the answer is no. It'll give you the best results, but it can be conducted any day in June and to the first weeks of July. I would say, you know, maybe three weeks before, three weeks after, um, just to get your best, the best results. But the, the closer to the June solstice, the better. So this is the third video in our June solstice observations uh, series. And this one deals with the path of the sun, and all you need is a shadow stick sundial. Preparation of tools. So to make a shadow stick sundial, you could do something as simple as a pizza box with some clay and maybe a toothpick. Uh, if you put maybe a white sheet of paper on the pizza box and jam a toothpick into it, maybe stabilize it with a bit of clay. And this is an exaggerated diagram, usually a short uh, uh, gnomon, that's the uh, what what's going to cast the shadows is called the gnomon. A short gnomon is usually better, uh, especially if, uh, if you want to capture the, the sun when it's lower in the sky. Or you could take a piece of plywood and, and jam a finishing nail into it, uh, you know, leave it partway sticking out. Uh, the important thing is that the base is absolutely level, uh, flat and level, and that it is not disturbed for the whole day. So make sure if you have uh, kids or dogs running around uh, that they don't disturb this. So we're going to make careful observations using this, this uh, apparatus. And one of the best things you can do is, is make a mark once an hour every hour from sunrise to sunset. And what I like to do is when I'm, I'm actually marking the, the sundial, uh, just write in the time next to the dot. And that way you can do a, a sort of a post analysis later on. And so here, uh, series of, of, of dots, series of marks. And what we're going to be analyzing in this video is the pattern, the pattern of those dots. So let's take a look at a globe Earth versus a flat Earth uh, analysis. So oftentimes people within the flat Earth debate are talking about the flat Earth map, and, and there's a lot of contention about what's the correct map or, you know, a lot of details in there. And so really you can use any map you like. The only requirement is that the, the sun needs to circle the North Pole. If you have a flat earth map where the sun does not circle the North Pole, then, then you will not be able to use this analysis. So on the June solstice, about June 20th or 21st each year, um, on the globe earth model, the North Pole is tilted towards the sun 23.4 degrees. Uh, whereas on the flat earth mat, uh, model, the sun is merely uh, doing a circuit above the Tropic of Cancer. So to do our analysis, we're going to split it up four ways. Um, we're going to do a geometric analysis and a miniature model for both the flat earth and then the globe earth. So let's start with the geometric analysis of the flat earth situation. So in the flat earth model, the sun um, is traveling in a plane above the plane of the, the earth. And on the June solstice, it is traveling above the Tropic of Cancer. Uh, so you can imagine these things being parallel planes, uh, one containing the plane where the sun is traveling. And so if you remember from geometry, parallel lines make proportional shapes. So that red dot where those two lines are intersecting, uh, that's going to be the tip of our gnomon, and those two triangles are proportional. So if we have parallel planes, they also make proportional shapes. And again, where, where all those white lines cross, that's going to be represented by the tip of the gnomon of our sundial. So for example, if the sun is tracing a path in the sky and the sun is traveling in a plane parallel to the plane of the Earth, uh, we can actually faithfully reproduce that pattern um, using our shadow stick sundial. One analogy you can use is a pinhole camera. So everything up in the sky will be faithfully reproduced on the base of the sundial. And here the aperture of the pinhole is represented by the tip of the gnomon casting the shadow. So one aspect that's important to, to note is that the sun really needs to make a perfect circuit in 24 hours. All right, so uh, in the flat earth model, it's traveling in a circle. 
So we can actually place that circle in sort of the plane where the sun is traveling, and which means that this is going to produce a regularly spaced uh, series of tick marks on uh, the base of our the base of our sundial. Okay, so the sun is traveling uh, basically a certain number of degrees per hour. Then you should have a certain uh, certain pattern of tick marks, and they're regularly spaced. So here's what we predict in the northern hemisphere where we're seeing more than 12 hours of sunshine in, in June, on the June solstice, uh, we are going to get a pattern that, again, is in a perfect circle, or, or it's a circular pattern. It's a portion of a circle, a little bit more than a semicircle. Um, and the, the gnomon is going to be somewhere in the middle there. Uh, whereas in the southern hemisphere, we're still going to get a, a circular pattern or at least a portion of a circle, but we see the sun for less than 12 hours. So it's going to be slightly less than, than a full circle, but it will be a circular pattern of shadows. Also, please note that the, the actual dots are going to be equally, equally spaced. All right, so on the flat earth, the, our mathematical predictions are and when we face north, the pattern of shadows will be semicircular or a portion of a circle, and then the, the marks are going to be regularly spaced. That's what we predict. So why don't we try this out with a miniature model? So, and, and again, I'm using the Gleason's map, but the disclaimer is that the Gleason's map isn't necessarily the one. The, the, the only requirement for our map is that we just need the sun to circle the North Pole. So I placed the Gleason's map on, on a table, and I marked with... Uh, yellow tape that's the the equator so what i did is i, I moved the the lamp that's just a desk lamp or actually a book light uh, i moved it in so that the the bulb of the of the light was above the tropic of cancer and then i placed a little gnomon uh right above uh, the middle of the united states i'm, I'm going to call that missouri and then i marked the pattern of, of shadows so there's the tropic of cancer um, and then we mark a shadow and then we mark a series of shadows, uh, S for the, the June or the summer solstice in the United States. So we see that, that it is a semicircular pattern, a little bit more than a, than a circle, or I'm sorry, a little more than half a circle, but the, the dots are equally, equally spaced. All right. And the interesting thing is I, I actually repeated this process for the, the December solstice and then also the equinoxes. And it just changes the, the radius of the circular pattern. That's really the only thing that changed. So again, um, on the flat Earth, uh, flat Earth map, when we face north, we're going to get a semicircular pattern, and we're going to get regularly spaced marks. All right, so that was the flat Earth. Now on to the globe Earth. So we're, again, we're going to start off with a geometric analysis followed by a miniature model. So in the globe Earth model, the sun is 93 million miles away, and then the Earth is rotating. So the rotating Earth is causing the simulation of the sun to move. The sun doesn't actually move. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's an illusion caused by the turn of the Earth. And the, because the Earth is so small compared to the sun, the Earth essentially is a, is a dot compared to the size of the, of the sun. So you can actually consider that every single point on Earth is like essentially the center of the Earth with, re with respect to where the sun is. Uh, so that's going to make the analysis a lot easier. So oftentimes we'll see diagrams where you know, your local environment um, is essentially flat. So you can see like a flat piece of ground, but then it's surrounded by a sphere, a celestial sphere. So we're going to focus in on the June solstice or the sun's path on uh, June 21st. And this is uh, for a northern hemisphere observer. All right. And again, the 24-hour clock, if you imagine the sun traveling uh, one circuit in 24 hours, uh, you can kind of place that over where the, the sun's path would be. And, and you're going to get sort of an equal an equal number of degrees, uh, you know, every hour. All right. So this is Im important for our analysis because the sun's going to trace a circle in 24 hours with with equal speed, um, but then the light is going to come and it's going to intersect with our gnomon, which is a tip, the tip of the gnomon. Um, so that's actually going to produce a cone. So if the tip of the gnomon is a point, and then the sun is traveling in a circle, we're going to actually get a cone of light. All right. And then if we slice this cone of light with the, 
base of our sundial, this is actually going to give us a hyperbola. So it's actually called a conic section, and it's going to be a hyperbola. Now here's where the, the spacing of the tick marks is going to come in. As the sun moves regularly around um, the, its circle, you can kind of represent that by the, the geometric faces, those flat faces of this cone. What's going to happen is we're going to get a pattern of tick marks, but the tick marks are not going to be equally spaced. Okay, so if we say there's like one tick mark per flat section of, of that cone, um, so the tick marks are not going to be equally spaced. The tick marks are going to be widely spaced on the beginning and in the end. All right, so that's our prediction. And so here's uh, an interesting uh, diagram I found um, when researching the history of sundials. And so most of the year, the path of the shadows is curved. We call that a conic section, or actually more specifically, it is a hyperbola. All right, so what kind of path are we going to consider in both hemispheres? So let's take a look at the southern hemisphere, which is their winter solstice, and then the northern hemisphere, which is our summer solstice. So in the northern hemisphere, June is the start of summer. So it's going to be a, a path, again, facing north. It's going to be a path, and, and it's going to kind of wrap around the gnomon. The gnomon is going to be sort of in the middle of that curve, but it is going to be a hyperbolic curve. Whereas in the southern hemisphere, June is the start of their winter. And again, facing north, it's still going to be a hyperbolic pattern, but it's going to be more sort of stretched out a, a lot wider. All right, so again, facing north, these are the patterns that we should expect, either northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere. So again, to recap, the globe Earth, our mathematical predictions is that when we face north, the pattern of shadows will be hyperbolic, and the tick marks will not be equally spaced. They're going to have wide spacing at sunrise and sunset. So now we're going to try this, this out on a miniature model using an actual globe, uh, a model globe. So what I did is I took a desktop globe, I tilted it towards a, a light source, it was actually an overhead light, and such that um, it was above the Tropic of Cancer, and then I rotated the globe um, in 30 minute increments and I marked shadows. All right, so there we are in, in the United States. Uh, the sun was directly above the Tropic of Cancer, and so you see it's, I, I used a little piece of a toothpick, and it's casting shadows. All right, so let's, uh, remind us, uh, this is the summer solstice for the United States in June, and so that's the pattern that we're gonna ex uh, we're gonna predict, and it turns out that we we got just that, and the uh, these dots were were actually marked about 30 minutes, about 30 minutes between uh, those tick marks. So this is about five hours of marking shadows. Please also notice not only are the tick marks not equally spaced, and they're more widely spaced out in the beginning and the end. Uh, but the curve kind of wraps around uh, the gnomon. All right, let's try the same thing in the southern hemisphere. And again, the sun is directly above the Tropic of Cancer, uh, but we're going to see what the situation looks like in Australia. All right, so there's the sun uh, coming in. It's casting a longer shadow because it's the start of their winter. And let's uh, remind us what the winter solstice pattern looks like. Again, the, the gnomon is, is uh, further away. Um, and the, the, the pattern is going to be hyperbolic uh, with, with uh, differently spaced tick marks. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what our pattern was. And it turns out it was, it was just that. Okay, and again, these tick marks are about 30 minutes apart. So notice the spacing of the tick marks. Also notice that the, um, this was, since they have uh, fewer hours of sunshine, this is only 3.5 hours of marking shadows. Uh, so it matches the hyperbolic pattern that we predicted. All right, so um, this is a, a recap. In the Flat Earth model, um, the pattern of shadows should mirror the pa path of the sun in the sky. It's traveling in a plane above the plane of the Earth. So it'll be a semicircle or a portion of a circle, um, and it will have regularly spaced uh, tick marks. And in the Globe Earth model, it'll make a conic section pattern, specifically a hyperbola, with unequally spaced marks. So that's those are the two predictions. Now it's up to you to go out in the field and actually um, try this out yourself. So if you would like to share your results, uh, YouTube user Kara Diane has set up message boards. They're called flatearthmath.boards.net. And uh, why don't you take a picture of, um, of your shadow stick sundial? And I like to, to mark you know, north. I like 
with a little arrow, and then you know maybe share us with uh, share us your your latitude, you know, northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, things like that. And it'll be interesting to see what other people come up with. Here's a nice quote from Mother Teresa: "Spread love everywhere you go. Let no one ever come to you without leaving happier." Thank you.